Hello, and welcome back to So Forth and So On. I'm Miss Henderson, and today I am going to make a fabric napkin holder. Now, uh, the napkin holder I'm going to make, it is a fabric basket, ultimately, and you can make these in any size that you want. Mine is a little larger because of my feature print on uh, my fabric because it's a panel and you'll see the end result but I've started working on it and I decided why not just make a video uh, for the fabric basket or fabric napkin holder now my pieces are I start off with two 10 by 10 inch squares and then the sides are 10 by 5 and I need four sides for each part, four sides for the lining and four sides for the outer fabric and I will need two 10 by 10 inch squares. Also on the, uh, we will need interfacing for the four sides. You can do the bottom as well but definitely the four sides so that it will stand up. It was a firm or heavier weight interfacing, a fusible interfacing that we use and that'll just be for the sides. So I have my one piece here and I believe this basket probably will be reversible. So anyway, I have already interfaced this fabric and I've sewn it together and so now it stands up. So I'm going to work on the other portion and I have it pinned together and we're just joining them you initially join them edge to edge right sides together join each side and then you're left with a square without a bottom and then what you ultimately do is sew each side of the bottom to the side the bottom of the side and you end up with a square that doesn't stand up because it has no interfacing so you have these two and um, now we're going to put the lining and the panel together and see what we come up with so let's get finished <laughs> so I left in joining the sides of this I left a quarter inch from the bottom of the side fabric so that I could open this and line it up with the bottom fabric and sew a straight seam on all four sides. So just leave a quarter inch, you'll sew down and leave a quarter of an inch here. So when it's time to put the bottom on and join the bottom, you can pull that back and join it on there. I am using a, a quarter of an inch seam and my stitch length is 2.5 and I'm going to back stitch at the beginning of the end before turning the corner and of course we remove our pins as we get to them this corner I go as far as I can and then I back stitch and then I pivot so I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of these edges and I will meet you back shortly okay so now that we have both sides both parts sewn together we are going to put the outside inside the lining piece right sides together and then we're going to match up the seams match this seam with this seam and you can use clips or you can pin it together you can open the seams or you can um, nest the seams, whichever you prefer or whichever the fabric prefers so we get this pinned all the way around 
you probably want to use a lot of pins and remember to leave an opening on one of the edges ideally I would have left an opening in the bottom of the lining fabric but I did not so I have to leave an opening somewhere right so we'll leave it up here it'll be easier for me to close here I believe and I might just uh, well we'll see I was gonna say hand stitch <laughs> we'll see okay so I just want you to see how I have it pinned all the seams are matching and then I can straighten it out It's, going to, it's a nice sturdy sturdy to hold a lot of napkins or a lot of anything good it's five inches deep so yours doesn't have to be this big for napkin holders but I have a lot of napkins anyway I'm going to put a pin where I want to stop sewing so I'm going to stop here and I'm going to start right about here. I'm going to sew all the way around this top part until I get to this pin here. And then once I do that, I will turn it right side out and we'll go from there. So I will meet you back here as soon as I'm done sewing. Okay. I have finished sewing all the way around, and so now I want to reach in and turn this right side up. And you're going to have to tug it a little more because it has the uh, firm interfacing on it. So it's a little bit. more challenging but because it's large that helps and then just make sure you poke out your corners first Get those corners perked up and you can use your uh, point turner or a tool I'm just gonna use my finger because again these are not tiny this is not a tiny project so it's really refreshing to do something that I don't really need to use any tools with. Okay. Alrighty, and then we'll go in and push our corners on the other fabric in and then work this down in here. Here's where you're gonna straighten it out. You give it a nice tug, and you're gonna iron it. <laughs> yeah, and just make sure all your loose strings are gone. Just fiddle with it and get it all straightened out. But this gives you an idea. I'm gonna go press it in a moment and close up that hole or opening. So you see how I'm pulling my fabric to make sure that we roll right on that seam. And you just take your time and go around and make sure that it's nice. And then give it a good press to secure it. So you get the general idea of how to get this situated down inside. Okay. Getting those corners really good. And the 
seams. Make sure your seams are matching. And once you give it a good press, <clears throat> that's how it will look. And this one, I believe, we can do reversible. So I'll just poke in the corners the opposite direction. I want to see what side I like better. Okay. And this is my opening here that I will stitch. And since I have to top stitch anyway, I can make sure I grab that opening in the top stitching. So that'll be there. So I'm going to finish this up and I'll be right back. I think I like the birds on the outside better. And the butterflies. I think that's the original way I plan to make it and I like the other fabric. So you always I'm always changing my mind and designing even after I have a plan I change mid way through the project sometimes. Okay. Is there anyone else out there who changes mid-project or while you're doing the project, you're constantly changing? Let me know in the comments. I'd like to know I'm not the only one. All right, I'll be right back. All righty, well, I am back, and I finished our basket, and now I'm in the process of making more napkins. So this is a napkin holder here. I think it turned out lovely. I have a th thread hanging there from the table. But I really like that um, panel there. This is the inside and it's ready to be filled up with lots and lots of napkins. So my around the world napkin. And my Easter bunnies, more Easter bunnies, and I'm working on a bunch more napkins to fill up my napkin basket. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you make the basket and some napkins. Check out my other videos on uh, making napkins and placemats and table toppers and all those other beautiful place settings that we can do ourselves. Um, be sure to like <laughs> and subscribe to my channel. Like my video and subscribe to my channel. And I'd like to hear from you in the comments. And uh, share me with others. Until we meet again, may love bring you to your feet and show you how to dream again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Bye-bye.